G'day, I'm just here with William Kensington 25. There is not one English language, there's so many variations of the English language. That's what I love about the English language, it is so transient, it's so diverse and it's so colourful. And it's funny that it originated in this little island of Britain, well, England very much, and that came from like the Gallic, the Germanic and the Latin languages, which was English. And then English has spread throughout the world, but in all those countries like the States, New Zealand, Australia, South Africa, they've developed their own terms, which are not used in the motherland. It's fascinating. We've just thought of this because right behind William here, this ute just pulled up. And it just came to mind that in America, you would have no idea what I'm talking about if I said a ute has just parked behind. Same with the UK. The only time we hear the word ute is when we watch Australian soaps like Neighbours or Home and Away. And although that wouldn't be counted as a lorry, um, some things you would call trucks. And in the UK, we call them lorries. What, what would be a big truck, we would call a lorry. And we don't have the term lorry in Australia. No. And it's like New Zealand, a corner shop. What you call maybe a corner shop here or in the UK is a dairy. Now to me a dairy is somewhere you milk cows and it's like the English language has been on this fascinating journey and it's developed these own words in their own right or words that are already used have gone out of fashion in one place and stayed in fashion in another or might be have different meanings. It's just a fascinating language. Do you know what the corner shop is in Australia? What's that? Milk bar. Milk bar. You don't get so many milk bars now do you? They became 7-Elevens and Wiki marts and all of that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, in country towns they still call them milk bars. It's fascinating, like in England we say pavement. In America you say sidewalk. No, we say footpath. Footpath in Australia, sidewalk in America. It is converging with YouTube, I think. At an intersection, when you go to an intersection and you have to go around this island in the middle of an intersection. We call it a roundabout in Australia. Do you call them roundabouts in the UK? Definitely call them roundabouts in the UK. What do they call them in America? Carousels, I think. They call them something different in the Americans. So what do you call them in different parts of America? They're not... I don't think they have many in Texas. But turn circle, I've heard turn circle before. What I love is the same words that have different meanings. Like in England, if you're pissed, it means you're drunk. In America, yeah. it means you're angry. If you wear thongs in England, it's like that pantyhose type thing that, that men wear and women wear. But here in Australia, it means like sandals. Yes, when you wear thongs in Australia, it's like sandals. It's like flip flop, flip flop. They call them. Sorry, mate. And uh, in New Zealand, they call them jandals. Yeah, the jandal. is a jandal. It like rhymes with sandals, like jandal sandals. Jandal, yeah, yeah, jandal. That's quite catchy. Well, maybe the thong in Australia is going to go out because it's confusing for Americans. They think we're talking about underpants. It's the same with the UK. I talk about thongs here, and they think I'm talking about underpants. And I think a few years ago there was a thing with Jurex. In one of the countries, it's a condom, and in the other, it's sellotape. And here, when you're having a 4X, you're having a drink. In America, you have a 4X and you're having a condom. Oh, I quite like the American version too. I'll have a bit of both. I'll go for one for a bit of the other. A 4X condom, not a 4X drink. That's, that's a bit of a quantum leap too, isn't it? That's why they can't sell 4X in the US. It doesn't sound right. I, just love, I remember 4X. Um, 4X isn't that widely drunk in here in Sydney, but in the no. UK, 4X and Fosters are the two big beers. And people love them, yeah. And I just assumed that everybody in Australia would drink 4X and of course Fosters, but they don't. In fact, a lot of them, when I mention it, look down on it. They love Tui's here and BB and all that. But And Heineken. And Heineken, funnily enough. But things like 4X and Fosters, in the UK, they love it. And in parts of Europe, very big. A lot of people in Sydney don't drink 4X because it's a Queensland beer. And in rugby, it's traitorous because, you know, we're blue in rugby and in Queensland, they are maroon in the 4X. 
in Australia used to be really derogatory to call somebody a wog. It sort of still is, but it's like a term of endearment these days. Whereas in England, it's an extremely racist term, like that certain N-word for a black person. It's taboo. When I first came to Australia, I heard the word wog. I was so shocked and offended. I thought... This is terrible, but of course I realise it actually means somebody who's like Greek or Asian or something who's actually not white Anglo-Saxon. But I was absolutely shocked to hear the term, and although originally it is a racist term here, yeah, it's become almost an acceptable term, which I think is quite it's slightly worrying in everyday language, whereas in the UK it's taboo. If I was to say what on the radio or something, I'd probably lose my job. In England? Oh yes. It would be like saying that the N word nigger, which I just said, but I used it in context. Yeah, I hope. yeah, yeah. You're right. So, yeah. so you know, um, you wouldn't say it, and I still won't use the, that the term "wog" over here. In the seventies and early eighties, you would have got into trouble as well in Australia. But it's um, diluted so much that it's lost its sting. You know? And other terms here mean the same, but they have less of an effect. In the UK, if I was to say bullshit on the radio or something, I'd get in trouble. Whereas here, it's quite common to hear presenters say bullshit. It's like an everyday, even wanker over here has less serious connotations than, say, in the UK. And it's funny how words with the same meaning have less effect and are seen as less serious. Well, bullshit in, in America is no big deal either. But if you say damn in America, that's the D word. That's probably the worst word you could say. Is damn because that's blasphemy. Damn. Down south, they won't say it. And it's so strange because to me, damn is one of the tamest words you could use. I use it all the time. I wouldn't even use bloody often because some people find it offensive. But damn, God, that shocks me. No, not a swear word here at all. I never knew that. That's absolutely fascinating how words in different countries have less seriousness or more seriousness or more consequences. It's, it's just funny how words have developed differently. It's a whole journey of the English language.